it out. Uh, fair, Fairtax.org, that is part of the entire package, which is a, a proposal right now in front of Congress and was in 2007, yes, but it is repealing uh, the 16th Amendment, uh, uh, the in income, allowing for the income tax. It's repealing that. And that, that would have to be a process first before implementing the new tax system? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. Um, though, of course, there's plenty of waste in the militarism around the world, but to throw out the number of 43% reduction, um, that's going to involve just a lot of troops who are contracted for a certain amount of time to just fire them abruptly. How are you going to manage to do that? Well, so then, no, it's not. So my experience as governor of New Mexico was, was that one of the promises I made as governor of New Mexico would, was, was that there would be fewer state employees when I left office than when I got there. And that was going to simply manage attrition. You, you can have that same phenomenon in the military, given that... Uh, military service is limited to uh, two or four year uh, sign-ups. And I might be wrong on that, please correct me if I am wrong. But uh, I think it's simply managing attrition in the military also. So, and, and for that matter, I think that uh, government cutback uh, is, is very simply, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, not, uh, uh, I'm not adverse to, to cutting government, but Cutting government, slashing government, requires uh, congressional um, um, cooperation. In New Mexico, I got no congressional, I got no legislative cooperation to do that. I always said, as governor of New Mexico, that I could have cut government by one third, and no one would have noticed the difference. But that I wasn't the dictator, uh, and that I couldn't. So I, I think it's I think it's very doable, and I base that on my experience as governor of New Mexico. A reduction in state employees in New Mexico had never happened year to year in the history of the state, and New Mexico celebrates its 100th year anniversary, much less a reduction in state employees over an eight-year period. Hi, Governor Johnson. I, I appreciate you coming to Colorado, Florida. I uh, volunteer for an organization called Get Out of Our House, Go. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. No. But um, we would... Kind of speaks for itself, though. <laughs> yes. We would really like to send some citizen legislators up there with you if you're elected to help you get this done. But um, my question is, what are your views on the Department of Education? Uh, so I'm talking about a 43% reduction really across the board, and it isn't across the board because when it comes to the Department of Education, I am advocating abolishing the Federal Department of Education. And very simply, the explanation for that, um, because you're asked probably to explain that a lot, the Federal Department of Education gives every state 11 cents out of every dollar that every state spends. But that's Florida sending it to Washington in the first place at 12 or 13 cents, having it come back as 11 cents, and it coming back with 16 cents worth of strings attached. Amen. We're going to give you 11 cents, but you have to do A, B, C, and D to get the 11 cents. Well, A, B, C, D costs 16 cents to deliver. So just get the federal government out of education and return it back to the states, just like Medicaid and Medicare. 50 laboratories of innovation and best practice, and that's exactly what you will have. And I think people are also slain to find out that the Department of Education was established in 1979. And if you want to take a look at educational results since 1979, you know, that's been a, a decreased phenomenon. Give it back to the states. There would be some fabulous success that would get emulated. I think, also think there would be some spectacular <coughs> failure. I will also tell you, as governor of New Mexico, I was more outspoken than any governor in the country regarding school choice, believing that we needed to bring competition to public education. And for six straight years in New Mexico, I knew it wasn't going to go anywhere, but I took on the debate and the discussion over a full-blown voucher system in New Mexico for six straight years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you were President Gary Johnson. Could you explain your Middle East? policy as regards Israel and Iran, what, you, what threats you see there, what would be your, re your reactions to those threats? Well, uh, when it, first of all, I, I'm opposed to foreign aid. I think the notion that uh, we're, uh, we're borrowing, 43, borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar and then giving it away to foreign 
foreign countries. Uh, I think that is a mistake. But uh, when it comes to uh, Israel, uh, I have met with met Netanyahu. Uh, I think it's a mistake that we should think we're going to dictate to Israel what is in their best interest. So I want to differentiate between foreign aid and military alliances. I think military alliances are key to the notion of us being able to reduce our military spending by 43% and have other countries take up that slack. So military alliance with Israel, I think, is has been, has been and will be in the future uh, very key. And that it's a mistake for us to presume what is in Israel's best interest. Israel knows what is in its best interest and will pursue that. Iran. Is Iran a military threat? I think, I think it's completely analogous to Iraq 10 years ago. No, it's not. But we should be vigilant to that military threat. And why is Iran potentially a military threat? It's because we took, it's the unintended consequence of us having taken out Saddam Hussein in Iraq. That was their military threat. Right? You've done that. And now, we, now we're faced with a, with a nuclear Iran, with a crazy leader. Well, and so we should be vigilant. We have the military surveillance capability to see that happen if it does. And we shouldn't rule out any options if that, in fact, is something that happens. And I think it would be naive of us to think that Israel is not going to address that issue first and in our best interest. But do you think Israel has the capability? Because that's, that's an attack that would have to be hitting a lot of targets simultaneously to have a real effect to put that program out completely as opposed to just delay it. And would, would you as president look at preemptive strikes on Iran or not? Well, uh, I think, first of all, that I don't want to misspeak in, in this process at all. But all those things that you just said, I, I can't fault, find fault with anything it is that you're saying, meaning you're raising the question, should we, well, first of all, you have to establish that there's a threat. It's my understanding that they're five years away from a nuclear device and that they're a decade away from the delivery of that device. Now, I realize that that, that is something that is being uh, debated. I wish I had the, 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 the knowledge that the, uh, the, the intelligence to go along with, with the issue. I don't. But... Yes, we have to be vigilant against that kind of threat and shouldn't rule out uh, any of those options. And again, I think it's naive to think that uh, Israel won't be acting in our best interest to make that happen. And to my knowledge, they do have, uh, uh, Israel has the capability to do just that, to address multiple targets simultaneously. That's my understanding of Israel's military capability.